Thanks for listening to the Thyroid Fixer podcast with your host, me, Dr. Amy Horneman, aka the Thyroid Fixer, functional medicine practitioner, hormone and weight loss expert. We're talking all things thyroid, hormone and health related in order to empower, educate and transform you. So if you're ready to get your life back, let's get started. So happy to be back with you. You know, these Q&A sessions are awesome because I get so many questions coming in from patients on Facebook, in the Facebook groups, and I know that other people's questions are your questions too. So this is going to be a game changer for you, and you can probably hear the excitement in my voice. The latest introduction, the latest member of the family, to the fixer line is metabolism fixer. And this, oh my God, I formulated this just for all my people out there that need to lose weight, that need help in the weight loss department, that can't lose weight no matter what they do, that feel like they have a slow metabolism. And that might be thinking of trying all those peptides out there, you know, the Beverly Hills soccer mom drug of choice for weight loss peptides. Or even if you're on them already and you're like, man, these are really expensive and I'm still not losing weight, add in Metabolism Fixer. Here's what I did. I took the power of T2, which increases your basal metabolic rate while you are sitting there watching Netflix. You're burning fat while you're watching Netflix. I combined it with a very unique patented ingredient called Suppressa. Suppressa has multiple clinical trials backing its efficacy in reducing your appetite, decreasing snacking, and providing way more control over your food intake. It is amazing. We also see improved emotional well-being, just decreased food cravings all around, reduced hunger, and weight management. Add on top of that, We have green tea extract, we have purple forest purple tea extract, both of which affect the metabolism in a very positive way without the jitters of normal fat burning supplements out there from the 1980s and 90s, right? The ones that made you feel like you're having a heart attack. You will not have that in any of my supplements, thyroid fixer or metabolism fixer. But metabolism fixer, ooh, yeah, we kicked it up a notch. It is in powder form. So you can drink it through your day. It's going to flavor your water. We got orange crush and refreshing citrus. I love them both. It is going to keep you under control all day long. So you throw a couple scoops in your water bottle in the morning, throw a scoop or two in your water bottle throughout the day. You will have fat burning and appetite control the entire day for what? An eighth of a price of the peptides? Oh my God, you can't go wrong. So grab some Metabolism Fixer today. Please let me know how you do on it. I am super excited for you, super excited. So that is why we are diving into all your thyroid and hormone questions today. I love these Q&As. We're gonna go through the ones that were sent in first and then I'll get to your live questions. If you're listening to this on the Thyroid Fixer podcast, Please know that I am live almost every Monday on Facebook at 4 p.m. Eastern. So you are welcome to jump on and enjoy the topic of the day, listen to interviews that I do, and then also on these Q&As, jump in and text your question, and I'll read it live, and I'll answer it live. So whether you're on Facebook Live, if you're listening to this as a recording, please know that I'm always here for you to answer your questions. Okay, diving in. Here's the first one. Love this one. I love this one. My functional practitioner doesn't want my TSH below a 0.5. They said that optimal is 0.5 to 2. So this is where, you know, and here's the thing. Let me preface it. When you hear me interview other practitioners, if you're listening to other people's podcasts and you hear them do interviews, just because we interview someone does not mean that we agree with them 100% of the time. I have many people on my podcast that I respect uh, just, I mean, beyond measure, 
but there might be a point or two where we just disagree on it. And that's okay because it takes all of us collaborating, putting all of our brains together to really help people. So you might find a functional practitioner that just has a different take and, you know, weigh it out, listen to both sides of the argument. So I know myself, Paul Robinson, Dr. Weston Child, we are all in agreement on what I'm about to say. I don't care if your TSH is suppressed. If it's below a 0.5, that doesn't necessarily mean you're hyper. It doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. It doesn't mean you're on too much T3. It doesn't mean you're on too much medication. That TSH, I mean, number one, back to the basic foundation core of thyroid, we know that when you are on any amount of T3, that TSH is going to be suppressed. And I talk about this a lot. I talk about how your doctor is going to freak out if your TSH gets suppressed and you're going to be called hyper instead of hypo. And they're going to go just on that TSH alone. But I don't want to go down that rabbit hole too much because then, then we won't get to any of the other questions. But in a nutshell, whenever you can have a suppressed TSH on T4 and it does not mean that you're hyper. If you are hyper, you will know it. You will be jittery. You will be sweaty and clammy and, and, and not feel right. And your heart's racing. You'll have a high heart rate and, and just like feel like you're crawling out of your skin. I talk about that a lot too. So you're going to know if you're hyperthyroid. Just because your TSH becomes suppressed, it does not mean that you're going hyper. And it also doesn't mean that, you're, that it's wrong or that we have to change something to bring that TSH back up. So what if your TSH is a 0. 0.002? And let's say hypothetically you're on, I don't know, 25 micrograms of T3. Or maybe you're on 25 micrograms of T3 twice a day. And you're feeling good. And you finally feel like a human being. And let's say um, I'm going to do a hypothetical. You're on 80 micrograms of T4 and 50 total of T3. And we're split dosing that T3. And your TSH goes to 0. 0.002. Does it matter? Do we care? To me, TSH becomes irrelevant. I'm not going to change your dose based on your TSH. I'm going to look at all the other lab values that we need to. What's your reverse T3? What are all of those? And, and then the big one, how do you feel, right? I always ask, how do you feel? How do you feel? And that really ties into your labs because you're more than just a lab value. We can't just go by what your labs look like. We have to ask, how do you feel? So if your TSH is below a 0.5, I myself as a functional medicine practitioner, thyroid expert, not going to care. Now you might be working with another functional practitioner who does care and wants that TSH above a 0.5 because that's their bottom, that's their bottom number and they don't like it if it's below a 0.5. I don't care. We have to move on and say, what are your other labs? What are your other symptoms? And again, I mean, if you listen to the, the thyroid experts out there, even the patient advocate thyroid experts like Janie Bothorp and, and Paul Robinson, we all say the same thing. It, TSH basically becomes irrelevant. Yeah, I want to take a look at it. I always toss that into labs, even after we're optimizing someone. I toss it in just for, for the information. And even just to see if it's maybe going up, like we don't want you above a two. And what if you're a thyroid cancer patient? We want that TSH suppressed and we definitely want it suppressed below a one. And if it goes below a 0.5, okay, that's good because that's preventing thyroid tissue from growing back. So we do not care about that TSH when you're on thyroid medication. Now, if you're not on thyroid medication, and your TSH is low, and your TSI is elevated, and your free T3 is through the roof, and your free T4 is through the roof, and you're jittery, and you're hyper, and then you're hyperthyroid, then you have graves. And that's, that's real. That's where TSH drops low, and all the other numbers are sky high, and you're testing positive for graves antibodies. Yeah, that's, that's an actual autoimmune condition where you're going hyper. But if you are hypo, and you're on T4, T3, you have any kind of T3 in the mix at all in the form of NDT, cytomel, leothyronine, and that TSH goes low, don't care. Okay, next question. Should I be on birth control if I have Hashimoto's? I get this a lot. I get this a lot. 
And then we want to talk about the birth control pills and side effects, acne, all of that good stuff. So, okay, ladies, this is the answer that I give my patients as well. If you're using birth control for birth control, and let's say, you know, listen, I mean, you're just in that position where you do not want a child coming into your life right now. Not a good time, not ready, not prep for it. You're using birth control for birth control. And you don't want to use other forms. You don't want to use a condom. You don't want to use a diaphragm. I think the sponge is out. There was a Seinfeld episode where Elaine went around trying to snag up all of the sponges because they were going out of biz, out of out of I guess accessibility. So I guess we're out of that. But if you legitimately do not want to use another form of birth control, and I would still, I mean, even if you're using birth control for birth control, I would still ask you to step back and weigh the different options because birth control is synthetic. You are putting in your body synthetic estrogen and synthetic progesterone. They are not at all the same as bioidentical forms of those hormones. They are not at all like the hormones that are in your body. Now, hormones are messengers. They are chemical messengers. They send signals to the cell. So when we are taking in a not quite the same as what our body is used to hormone, the cells can react erratically and they might not act like they should. So for example, progesterone is the calming hormone. It calms everything down. It it improves your sleep. It takes the edge off anxiety and anxiousness. It improves your mood. It helps with water retention. And your body sees that progesterone hormone and does what it should do accordingly. But when it sees the synthetic hormone in the form of birth control, sometimes it doesn't react right. So we will still see progesterone deficiency in women with birth control. Think about PCOS, my PCOS people, where you're stuck on birth control or you were stuck on birth control and you were told this is the answer for your PCOS. And then you're still progesterone deficient and you're still estrogen dominant. So the same thing can be said for synthetic estrogens. Number one, we never want you to go estrogen dominant, even on bioidentical estrogens. When we're using hormone replacement therapy, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, our goal is never to put you into a state of estrogen dominance because if you have a thyroid problem too, because this question was specific to Hashimoto's, and we are wanting you to convert T4 to T3, do we want to push you into a state of estrogen dominance? No, absolutely not. That's going to impair conversion. And then, so let's add on to that, putting synthetic estrogen in you, that comes with its own host of side effects on its own. And then we also have the estrogen dominant piece. So side effects of synthetic estrogens. You know, my friend Karen Martell, She has a podcast out right now. It's her latest one. I'm about halfway through. And she is just, she's so amazing with hormones. She just is. So she is interviewing, she's interviewing a brilliant, brilliant woman, Dr. Gersh and Dr. Felice Gersh. She, I've heard her speak before. Karen has interviewed her before. They're talking all about estrogen and the beauty and downside of it. And Dr. Gersh flat out says, listen, synthetic estrogen is different. That's where you get the issues with breast cancer. All these women are paranoid about taking estrogen because it's going to increase your chance of breast cancer, not the bioidentical form. But if you've been on birth control for many, many years, that is something to be concerned about, but you have time to get off of it. Use alternative methods. Synthetic estrogen also increases your risk of blood clots. So that's a biggie when a person has been on birth control for many, many years, the higher risk of blood clots because of the synthetics. So we now know through many, many years of study that the, oh, what was that study? Women's Health Initiative. Done many, many years ago. That's where you heard estrogen's bad. Don't be on bioidentical estrogen. Don't take estrogen hormone replacement therapy. It's going to cause cancer and blood clots. No, that was synthetic. That was synthetic, ladies. They were not studying bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. And they weren't using progesterone along with it to balance it out. And they didn't even care about women's testosterone levels, which I do care about. 
And then we have to look at birth control diminishes, depletes B6, zinc, magnesium. So there's some pretty big deficiencies that occur when you're on birth control. And we do have to, yes, we can replace those. You can take a supplement, you can take a supplement, you can take a supplement. But with all the other side effects of birth control, maybe consider going off of it. And this applies to the IUDs. In fact, the IUDs, I know some people like them a little bit better. I I mean, I'm on the fence. Listen, they're in. And you got to get that removed. No, it's not a pill. No, it's not going through your gut. So if we have a patient that truly wants birth control and protection, then the IUDs are a little bit better because, and, and they have gut issues. If you have Hashimoto's, you have gut issues. So we can use the IUD because it doesn't have to actually be processed through the gut. It's not pounding your gut with one more thing. It's not pounding your liver, having to do a pass through. IUD, okay, we can use that in those circumstances, but still in all, it's synthetic. It is in you. It is releasing hormones on a continuous basis, synthetic hormones. So you have to think about that when you're making your choices. I'm just here to give you all of the info and then you can make your choice. This is a big question that I get actually quite often, quite, quite, quite often. And then, you know, there's people that use birth control for acne. There are so many better ways to control acne, so many better ways. And actually, I believe it's this week or next week, I have a podcast coming out on skin and we will talk about acne and what you can do for that. But you don't want to, what's the, what's that, what's that saying? Put out fire with fire, put out fire with gasoline. If you have a fire, AKA acne on your face, do you really want to pour gasoline on that fire by putting birth control, synthetic hormones in your body? No, there's so many other ways to balance hormones, hormonal acne, than throwing birth control on you. That's the same as, oh, we're going to fix your your depression that's caused by your thyroid being out of balance by giving you an antidepressant. We're going to fix your high blood pressure that's caused by lack of T3 by giving you blood pressure medication. It's the same thing. It's no different. And how often do I talk about the Band-Aid medications that so many people get from their practitioners when they go in saying, hey, doc, this is my issue. Oh, here you go. Here's a script for antidepressants. Here's a script for blood pressure. Here's a script for a statin. Band-Aid, Band-Aid, Band-Aid without getting to the source. Heart disease, cardiovascular events. I know I'm going down a rabbit hole. Can be reversed by optimizing someone's thyroid. Why? Because the thyroid is the master gland. It controls everything. Every cell in your body has a receptor sign on it for T3, thyroid hormone. So just think of the changes that we can make in your body and the medications that you can come off of when we optimize it. I totally went down a rabbit hole there. I meant to stay on birth control, but it's all tied in, all tied in. Okay. Next question. Why am I getting tired again? I thought my thyroid was optimal. First, we have to look at your labs. Right. So if your labs tell me that you're optimal, we then move to your symptoms. I said in the very beginning, we compare symptoms with labs. Do they pair up? So you can have someone listen on. uh, Let's get away from this question. Let's go the opposite end of this question. You could have someone with labs where their free T3 is a 3.2, not quite optimal, like 3.5 or above on the standard lab value range scale that's here in the U.S., You could have, um, let's say, a reverse T3 of a 6, TSH, you know, 0.5, 0.02. Don't really care about the TSH, right? And you feel great. You're like, I'm amazing. I'm I'm great. I can lose weight when I want to lose weight. I maintain great energy through the day, very little brain fog. My sleep is so much better. My energy is so much better. Oh, by the way, my hair is growing back. Thank you, whole body collagen as well. And the Oxana Grow, both of those, bam, hair growth. I'm not going to push more medication in you just to get that T3 up to 3.5 because you feel good. Okay, so back to the question. What if your thyroid labs are optimal and you don't feel good? Or they were optimal and you were feeling good and now you're not? Multiple answers to that question. First of all, we have to figure out, is it your thyroid and your thyroid medication? Maybe you need a little bit more medication because your optimal is not... Maybe it's a little bit higher. 
right? Maybe you're optimal, your optimal free T3 when you take the lab 24 hours without medication, you're better at like a 4.5 or a 4 instead of a 3.5. And you're coming in at 3.5 and it looks good on paper, but you're not quite at your optimal yet. Beyond that, we have to look at the other factors. And this is where you have to almost bring yourself back to the basics. And believe me, I know it's hard for me to go back to the basics because I love labs and I love all this medical stuff and how the body works and how it how it interacts with other hormones and your cortisol and all that fun stuff. But let me ask you this. Are you sleeping? Are you using blue light blocking glasses before bed? Are you getting good deep sleep? If you're not, you may have to purchase an aura ring to track your sleep and track the quality of your sleep. So those are biggies. If you are not producing the proper amounts of melatonin before bed, you may have to supplement. You may have to do those things like turn off the TV, the phone, the computer before bed in order to get deeper quality sleep because that will affect weight, energy, mood, cognition. Are you eating correctly? Are you eating enough? Are you trying to, you know, cut back a little bit because you figure you're still in that 80s and 90s mindset of calories in, calories out. So maybe if you drop your calories, those extra couple of pounds will come off a little bit faster. And then you actually set yourself back. So you were going really well. Thyroid was looking good, good medication, right medication, getting those numbers optimized, feeling better. And then you thought to yourself, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to back off on the amount of food I'm taking in. Because if I do that, I know I can spur on some weight loss. You know what? I'm going to go to the gym more often. I'm going to do a CrossFit workout like five days a week. And you're not getting in any rest. You're crushing your body. You're trying to do too much to get a faster result. You're not trusting the process. So even some of the behaviors that you're doing can set you back. Where it's not your thyroid. It's these other back to the basics Let's come back to the basics and check those boxes. Sleep, eating. Are you not eating enough? Are you eating gluten? Did you let that sneak back in? Are you self-sabotaging a little bit? Are you exercising too much? What about the stress in your life? Do you have an underlying stressor that maybe you didn't tell me about as my patient? Maybe you just haven't dealt with it. You've kind of put it on the back burner But then when you really start writing it out or talking about it, it's this deep underlying stressor that you really have to deal with because it's literally throwing your body off. I have patients that when we really start digging, a lot of stressors will come out and be put on the table that really, I mean, even they didn't realize were that big until they spoke it out loud or until they wrote it on an intake form. And then we have, we, both the patient and myself, have this realization of, you know, your body's not going to respond to the treatment if you are dealing with this constant low-level stress, high-level stress, low-level stress that is running like a river beneath the ground all the time. And some things we can deal with and some things we can't. Some, If it's something we can't deal with, we need to implement strategies to be able to deal with it, not remove it from our life because maybe it's something you can't remove and you can't change. But we definitely have to implement mindset strategies to deal with it. That's why I have mindset coaching as part of my packages and part of my program when I work one-on-one with patients because it's a key component. You might not even know it until you start filling out the forms and then it all comes out and then we start talking. It's like, oh yeah, look at that. That stressor is going to keep you in a constant inflammatory, stressed out, high cortisol, low thyroid function, low hormone functioning, insulin high, fat storage mode, unless you deal with it. We got to get back to the basics. So that would be my answer to that. You know, sometimes if you're getting tired, go back to the basics. Are you taking your vitamin D every day? Vitamin D levels imperative, 80 or above for optimal. And if that's low, you're not going to want to get out of bed in the morning. You're going to be tired. What about your B vitamins? Are you taking those? How's your B12? What about your methylmalonic acid? Where are your hormones? Are you exercising at all? Are you exercising too much? I mentioned that already. 
Okay. Hopefully that answers your question. There's a lot, there's many answers to that question. I could keep going, but that's kind of the basics. Oh, let me mention protein too. Ladies, you guys are guilty of this. You don't eat enough protein. I, I, I challenge you, right? I ch- Just like I challenged you with the water a week or two ago, I said, get a gallon jug, drink from just that all day. Even if you're filling up your water bottle, just fill it up from that gallon jug. It is disturbing how little water that we drink, myself included. I'm not excluding me and saying that I'm perfect. I, I regularly tell you all that I'm not perfect. I eat the cake and I eat the bun with the burger. And yeah, I don't drink enough water just like you. But man, when I did it, oh gosh, it was so uh, disheartening, I guess. Like I don't drink enough water. And in order for me to get myself to drink enough water, I really, I need to get back to this this week. I really should be drinking from that gallon jug because then I can see. And by the end of the day, if half of that's still there, that's a huge problem. Water fuels your body. Your cells need it. You better be drinking. I mean, half of that better be gone or more in order for you to properly fuel your body, burn fat, not retain water, and have energy. So not enough water means you're going to be retaining water like a camel and you're not going to have energy to get through the day. So vitamin D, what I said, protein, Protein, track your protein. Go ahead and do it one day. You don't have to track your calories and your carbs and you you don't need to break out my fitness pal. Just get out of, let's go old school. Get out a piece of paper and a pen. And if you eat a whole chicken breast, I'll give you 25 grams of protein. If you eat a big old like T-bone steak, I'll even give you 30 to 35 grams of protein. If you use a scoop of whole body collagen, That's 11 grams of protein. If you're doing Designs for Health Pure Paleo or Pure Paleo Meal, which is the only kind of protein that I recommend because plant-based and whey are garbage, you shouldn't be using them, then you get 20 grams of protein. Write that down. Now, where are you at the end of the day? Ladies, you better be, I don't care what your weight is, you better be minimum 80 grams of protein, but you probably should be a little bit more. Remember that your heart takes 50 grams of protein to beat if you don't get enough protein, which is amino acids. Your body will steal amino acids from your skeletal muscle, from your hair, your skin, your nails. You wonder why your hair is falling out. You're not getting enough protein. There's not enough amino acids getting to the follicle. You want to know why you're losing muscle? You're not getting enough protein. Why you're not burning fat? You're not getting enough protein. Why you're not experiencing energy through the day, even though your thyroid is optimized, you're not getting enough protein. There are many other factors that you have to be doing on the back end, back to the basics and those lifestyle changes to experience the optimization of proper thyroid medication, proper supplementation on your body, proper nutrient levels, lower insulin, get back to the basics. Don't forget about sleep exercise, eating enough, proper eating, gluten-free, enough protein, enough water, vitamin D, B vitamins, and I could go on and on, other factors that affect energy levels as well. That's This is the overview. That's That's a good enough answer to that question. You have a lot to work on there. Just taking a minute to interrupt the podcast to tell you how you can sign up for a free discovery call to learn how we can work together as a team and how I can help you get your life back. If you go to my website, dramyhorneman.com, and click on book a call, you can schedule a time that's convenient for you. It'll be about 20 to 30 minutes, and we will learn what is going on with you, what you're suffering with, and you will learn what it looks like to work with me. So we cover everything from top to bottom, your labs, your prescriptions, change of medication, personalized nutrition plan, mindset, lifestyle, exercise, Everything is covered when you work with me. I hold your hand the entire time to get you your life back and to let you feel like you again. Okay, I have another question that kind of ties into this. I'm not losing weight. Okay, what about sleep? Right? We mentioned that. Are you if, if you're not eating enough, we're gonna go, we're gonna, we're gonna take a stroll back in time. We're gonna take a stroll back in time to the 90s. Remember in the 90s that every fitness muscle and hers, um, what were the other ones? 
Oh gosh, I'm trying to remember all the magazines that I would pick up, right? There was Muscle and, Her- Muscle, Muscle and Fitness Hers. There was Fitness Magazine. There was Oxygen Magazine. They were all geared toward ladies and fitness. And every single one of them said you got to eat six times a day to keep your metabolism going. Well, we know that that's false now. We know that that, no, no. And especially if you have a thyroid problem because your insulin is going to be off. You're going to have insulin resistance if you have a thyroid problem. If you eat six times a day and you eat every couple of hours, you're pumping out insulin every time that you eat. We don't want that. Also back in the 90s was the still true piece of advice that if you starve yourself, your body will go into starvation mode. Now, we have to differentiate between intermittent fasting and starvation. It's not the same. When we intermittent fast, we're actually fasting, but then we're eating the proper amount of calories within our eating window. Starvation is when you are doing the HCG diet and you're eating 500 calories a day or less. You're tanking your T3. There's no way in hell you will lose weight. If you starve yourself, remember that your body is smart. It will hold on to the fat stores for dear life if you are not giving it the proper amount of calories in a day. So for some people, your minimum might be 1,200. For other people, your minimum might be 2,800. A calorie is not a calorie. It does depend on the food that you eat. So if you're eating 12, if your minimum is 1,200 calories and you're eating that in Teddy Grahams and Oreos, you're still going to gain weight because of that insulin response and the inflammation that will incur. But what if you're eating really good food, but you're not taking in enough of it? Because you're doing that thing where you're trying to, oh, maybe I'll back off a little bit. I'll cut out that avocado. I don't really need the steak at dinner. Well, now you don't have enough protein. You don't have enough calories. And your body is literally holding on to your fat stores for dear life, for dear life. So you will not, you will not burn fat if you are not eating enough. Stress, we talked about that. Exercising too much, we talked about that. Subconscious beliefs. So that's kind of tying back to the mindset and stress, but are you running a recurring thought in your mind that you'll never get better? Are you repeating to yourself, you know what, I've been dealing with this for so long, I'll never get better, I'll never get better. My friend got better, but that's not me. I'm not like her. I'm not going to get better. I have no luck. I have no, uh, everything bad happens to me. I'm just never going to get better. I'm never going to get better. Tell yourself that enough and you won't. I'm a true believer in, manifestation, not outside of the realm of my belief in, in Jesus and, and almighty God, Jesus is my savior. I will admit it all day long. I'm not talking about some like psychedelic foo-foo stuff over here. I really mean that when you think about something long enough, you can manifest it, even the bad. So if you walk around going, I know I'm going to get a, get a terminal disease. I know I'm going to get cancer. I'm going to get cancer. I'm going to get a terminal disease. I'm going to get cancer. I'm going to get cancer. You're probably going to get cancer because you're literally telling your cells that you're going to get cancer and your cells listen to you. So if you keep telling yourself that you're not going to get better, you're not going to get better. You're never going to get better. You're never going to lose this weight. I'm never going to feel better. I'm never going to get my thyroid optimized. Never, 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 never. You probably won't. So look into those subconscious beliefs. Get, listen to Joe Dispenza. I mean, he is the bomb when it comes to subconscious. Don't read the book, The Secret, although it does kind of tie in, right? Get into get into who's in the who and the no right now. Joe Dispenza, love that guy. I'm sure there's many, many others. I'm missing them. But get into that subconscious belief loop that you are telling yourself because that alone can keep you from improving, experiencing energy, losing weight, getting better. I won't stay there for too long but I just wanted to mention it. What it can, what can it mean if your T4 and reverse T3 are suppressed? Number one, how do you feel? How many times do I ask you that, right? How do you feel? So you're coming in. I'm going to use myself as an example again. I'm on T3 only. I'm feeling good. Been optimized for many, many years. If you look at my labs, I could give a heart attack to an endocrinologist with my labs. I've posted it before. Some of you know them. My TSH is suppressed. 0.005? 007? My free T3, the 
the last time I had it checked in December, I was actually surprisingly a little bit low. I was a 2.8 and that was 24 hours without meds. But you know, my mom had passed in November. I had the stress going on. I really didn't feel it. Like it's not like I gained weight or got really, I mean, I, I felt a little bit of fatigue, but I chalked that up to stress, but it dropped my T3. I didn't worry about it. I knew it would come back. Reverse T3, five, maybe it was even undetectable. <laughs> less than five. Uh, my free T4 was the bottom of the barrel. I want to say it was like 0.4. Now, how about asking me how I feel? Yes, those labs were in December, a month after my mom passed, but still in all, I still felt good. I didn't feel like I needed a medication change. I didn't feel like I tanked. I knew on days where I was tired, what it was, whatever. I knew I was eating bad because my sister came up and she's the sugar fairy and was baking and cooking everything under the sun after my mom passed and, you know, passed the funeral and all that good stuff. But man, I got to tell you, I, I still felt okay. I still handled it. I didn't look at a brownie sideways and gain five pounds like when I'm hypo. And I certainly wasn't hyper. Nothing to worry about. And, and there's no way in hell you would give me T4. My adrenals were fine despite the stress. I was all right. But what if you're coming in and you're anxious and you just... You're talking like this and you don't know what's wrong with you and, and, and you're just, you're, you're emotional and you're crying and you're anxious and you're crying and, and you're still gaining weight and you don't get it and, and your reverse is in the toilet and your T4 is in the toilet. Then we go, okay, that T3 only is starting to tap into your adrenals and we might actually have to, I mean, if you haven't tried this or, you know. We might have to try a combination of different meds, but we might have to switch you to an NDT to give you a little bit of T4 just to kind of nurture that. Get that reverse T3 out of the basement, the T4 up just a smidge, but still way heavily, hev heavier on the T3 side. So maybe we use a combo of NDT and a little bit of T3 just to kind of, you know, nurture you as you go. And then at the same time, you're resting. And, and you're, you're addressing your mental state and you're talking over issues and you're meeting with a therapist and you are getting good sleep and turning your phone off and wearing blue light blocking glasses and you're eating properly and you're literally nurturing your body with food. You're eating good, nutritious, nutritious, <laughs> healthy food, good fats good quality carbohydrates. You're still keeping your insulin low. And we're just, we're just loving on you and nurturing you and making sure that your iron's okay and your hormones are balanced. And we're going to give you some progesterone to take the edge off that anxiety. And then we say, okay, give this a little bit of time. Now we'll look at your labs and go by how you feel. You might notice that the addition of T4, as long as it doesn't push up your reverse T3, so maybe it goes from a five or non-existent to a seven or an eight, a nine. We're still under the optimal where we want reverse T3 to be. But you start to feel better because you got that little bit of T4 in the system, but more T3 than T4. So that T3 is still doing its job. The reverse is still low. Your T4 comes up a little bit. Your T3 comes into optimal. And you just start to feel a little bit more balanced. So that is a tough question to answer because it depends on the individual. I just gave you two examples. Second example is a real patient. First example is me. So, and I have seen the effects of, of switching NDT or maybe even tyrosine T3, just a little tiny bit of T4, just a little bit. And then that just kind of nurtures the system. And of course, we're looking at everything else. I'm not saying that's the only change. We have to look at everything. Like I said, the added progesterone, bringing down the insulin, nutritious food, good sleep, lower stress, talk therapy, mindset therapy, subconscious programming, meditation, deep breathing, throwing in some yoga, rest. Then we take a look at it. Then we go, okay, are you a true non-converter? Are you a true T3 only patient? You might be. And then we just go back. I know in a week, you give me T4, give me, go ahead and give me 25 micrograms of T4. I will be hypo in a week. I will gain weight. 
I will be tired. I will know it. I don't convert. I convert that to reverse. That's it. Who else? L, Russ, I think she's still T3 only. I mean, we, all of our, us folks, myself, Karen, L, Russ, we all play around with doses just so we can kind of play around with our own and give it back to you guys to see what happens. Um, I know L tried to lower her dose of T3 during the shutdown, lockdown, and, and, you know, it, she felt good for a month and then she started gaining weight again. She's like, oh yeah, that didn't work. I tried. We all try. I mean, you can get, I'm, you're not going to try to give me T4 because I won't take it. I've tried that already. I can already report back to you what's going to happen, but everybody is so unique and different. Everybody is unique. So that's where we really have to, you know, look at the whole picture of you, that whole picture of who you are and then adjust accordingly. Okay. Another question, what if I have too high of a ferritin? You know, I don't see this that often. Most of my patients are too low in ferritin. Ferritin is your iron storage. It's imperative for hair growth. It's imperative for T4 to T3 conversion. What if it's too high? If it is above a 100, and this is the this is the optimal range on the other end. You know, we like to say, hey, ferritin, we want you like above a 50 you know, really, I think like around a 70, 80 is optimal for ferritin levels. I love that, like 60, 70, 80. But what if you're above 100? Well, now you got a little bit too much. So this, what do you do if you have too high of ferritin levels? Because that actually increases your risk of neurological disorders like Alzheimer's dementia. Here's what you want to do. You want to give blood. And then I'm going to give you something real fun. You want to drink wine with your meat. So red wine will actually decrease the iron uptake when you're eating red meat. So for those of you who are low in ferritin and we're working on getting your ferritin up and you're taking ferrochill iron with C because C increases absorption, you don't want to be drinking your wine with your steak because now you're lowering the absorption. But if you're too high in ferritin, you do get to drink wine with your steak. How about them apples? Oh, so many great, great, great questions. I appreciate everybody that has sent those in. And now I want to get to a couple of the ones that are coming in live. Do you take Synthroid before labs? You know what? I like to go 24 hours with no meds, including Synthroid. But if you slip up and you take it, it's not, it's not going to affect your lab results like T3. If you take T3 and you get your labs done, it can raise it by like a full point or more. I have seen true free T3 levels be at 2.8, but if someone takes their medication, their T3 med, depending on the dose right before their labs, it can be a 3.8. It can be a 4.5. You could get flagged as high and it has nothing to do with you being high. It has to do with that medication in your bloodstream at the time of the lab draw. Now we have a falsely elevated T3, but it doesn't matter as much with T4. I think I'm an extremely jittery, blood pressure elevated, on edge, almost like my normal stress response is heightened. I'm on the same dose of armor and T3 for months. Would it be because my reverse is an 8 versus a 17? Say, no, not at all. That's actually in an optimal range. But one thing I will say, and this actually happened to myself and a patient not too long ago. I'll give you my example. I got my pills from my pharmacy and... I was looking at them. I'm like, man, these T3, they're tiny. I wonder if they filled them with fives instead of 25. So I call the pharmacy. I go, did you get, are these like fives instead by accident? They go, no, our, our supplier changed. So the manufacturer changed. So first I noticed the, the size difference. And then it was, I was like, oh, oh, okay, I really like Greenstone. Myself and El Russ both like Greenstone pharmaceuticals for T3, for the generic, for the Leo, but I'll give this a whirl. It's cool. So I gave it, you know, like, I mean, I wasn't even paying attention to it, quite honestly. So this was not like a placebo effect. I felt anxious. Like for three days, my chest was tight. And I'm like, ew, this isn't me. What is going, what is happening? And it literally... I should be, you know, when it's yourself, you just don't think through things sometimes. I was talking to the patient that I'm talking about. We had a follow-up and she asked the question, hey, could a different manufacturer of T3 maybe make you more anxious? I was like, yeah. And I think that's what's happening to me right now, actually, as we speak. 
So I called the pharmacy. They're ordering in, They did order in Greenstone for me because I was ready to go bounce around to a bunch of different pharmacies in order to find the Greenstone because I don't do well on whatever that was. I can't remember the manufacturer. I, I just, I didn't do well on it. So it could be if you're on the same dose, same dose, same dose, same dose, and you're feeling that way, call your pharmacy and see if they change manufacturers. Because it could be that simple change. It was still T3. It was still 25 micrograms. I was still in the same dose. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. But generic manufacturers can change. There are a variety of different generic manufacturers. Okay. What if you don't have Hashimoto's, just hypothyroidism? TSH was over 200 when discovered. So with that, I would say... 95% of hypothyroidism is Hashimoto's. So just because your antibodies are testing low or negative, remember the antibodies can come back as a false negative. So you want to get those repeated. And then from there, I would say, let's look at your family history. I just had a patient last week who negative antibodies, but her mom her aunt and her sister all have hypothyroidism. Now they weren't told that they have Hashimoto's, but come on, autoimmune is strong in the families. I mean, just strong genetic component with any autoimmune condition. So nine times out of 10, it's going to be Hashimoto's. But I would also say either way, we still want to optimize you. So does it really matter? I mean, okay, for diet, we want gluten-free. Uh, yeah, I'd like gluten-free with everybody. Whether you have hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, whether you don't have a thyroid problem at all and your hormones are out of whack, if you have type 2 diabetes, if you have insulin resistance, if you have PCOS, I still want a gluten-free diet because gluten is inflammatory. And if you have a genetic predisposition for autoimmune, go ahead and eat gluten. That's going to turn that switch on real fast. So there's really no difference per se. I mean, there's not a lot of difference between If you have hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's, I still want to optimize you and I still want you feeling your best. I want you to be your best badass human self that you possibly can be autoimmune or not autoimmune. Can you tell me which collagen supplement you recommend or how much you should take? So I use the whole body collagen from Designs for Health. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. Whole body collagen is absolutely amazing. I have used it with my patients with alopecia, meaning bald spots. And it absolutely works. I use it when I'm not getting enough protein. So I talked about getting enough protein in. Let's say my protein intake is a little bit low. I will use that whole body collagen as a supplement to increase my total protein intake for the day where I don't necessarily have to rely on eating more meat or more chicken or more tuna or more eggs. I can just throw that in a shake. I can throw it in my coffee. I can throw it in my keto pancakes. Boom. More protein. Love it. Love it. No taste. Low protein. So also when I'm using the pure paleo meal from Designs for Health, that's a good protein shape because it actually has flavor. It tastes like a milkshake. But the collagen, you can add the things and there's no flavor to it. So I've added it to, if I make, um, if I'm using like a keto cereal or keto granola and I'll use milkadamia, uh, milkadamia milk, it's like macadamia nut milk. And sometimes I'll use almond milk. I'll put the collagen in the milk and stir that up and then put the keto granola in it. So that's another way to get it going. My body has no metabolism. You know, you'd be surprised. It's under there. You just need to optimize. It started way before I was diagnosed. Of course, it starts decades usually. I just don't feel hungry, so didn't eat much. Now I'm gluten-free, dairy-free, trying to turn the switch back on after all the Hashi weight gain. Does it just take a long time? Well, it takes optimization. So it's what I always talk about. You can do all of these behavioral changes over here. But if you're not optimized with your thyroid and getting those numbers up and we're not checking and balancing your hormones, then all of these gluten-free, dairy-free diets, exercising, not going to work because it's a both and. You can't do one without the other. So we also can't throw you on thyroid medication and say, now you can go eat some McDonald's. No, that's not going to work either. It has to be both and. So it comes down to optimization and working with a knowledgeable 
functional medicine practitioner that knows the thyroid. I know I keep saying this in a variety of different ways, but it keeps happening. I keep getting patients that are calling me and they say, but I already saw a functional medicine doctor or I have a functional medicine doctor. And then I look at the labs, I go, no, you don't. They're just using that term because it's kind of the, the new thing. So you have to work with somebody that is functional. And then beyond that, yes, I have seen all of the labs done, but the practitioner has no clue how to optimize the thyroid. You need a functional practitioner that specializes in the thyroid in order to get this done right. So thyroid and hormones, thyroid and hormones. Woo. All right. Last one. Is it okay to take T3 if I had breast cancer? Yes. It's even more important. It's even more important. So with any kind of, listen, thyroid master gland runs the show. That has to be optimal for all sex hormones to be optimal. Now, if it's an estrogen-driven breast cancer, then we want to make sure that your, your sex hormones are balanced. And with that, we have to balance your thyroid. If that takes T3, it takes T3. Every once in a while, I'll see somebody optimize on Synthroid or T4 only. But we have to look at all of those factors of conversion and make sure all of those are perfect. And then we move along. But no, it, it's with any kind of cancer, it's even more. Riley says hi. It's even more important to get that thyroid optimized. Even, even, even more important. Whew. Okay. We did so much, so much, so much. So, I mean, just thank you guys all for joining in and for submitting your questions and throwing them on here and giving them to me earlier. And we'll keep doing this. I love the Q and A's. It's just so such random information. So keep them coming, keep them coming. Make sure you subscribe to the Thyroid Fixer podcast on all podcast platforms because then you can binge, 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 binge and get all that information just soaked into your head. And of course, if you want to find out more about working one-on-one -on -one with me, you can go to my website, dramyhorneman.com, click on book a call and schedule a free thyroid hormone assessment. And we'll go over what's going on with you and what it looks like to work with me. All right. See you next week.